Hello and welcome to my tutorial concerning the logging ability of Python, which is actually built right on in, so you don't have to download anything, you just have to import logging. Uh, once you begin building uh, larger programs, incorporating a lot of variables, it can be pretty useful to utilize logging, the logging feature. Um, also, if you're, you're maybe like adding to the program over a long period of time and you might forget some of the older stuff that you had done even and all that and, and not quite under, remember how it, your program typically goes. Uh, also, if you're working like with a, a team, it can be really, really helpful like when you're collaborating to use logging just so someone can figure out what, why something isn't quite driving with your um, function or whatever. Um, it is possible to do pretty much all of the same logging stuff uh, with just you know saving and appending to a notepad file, all the stuff that I've already shown you guys how to do. Um, but what's nice about the logging feature is it has one built-in quote-unquote levels or hierarchical or hierarchies um, for you know what kind of log that string will be. Um, so it kind of saves you a lot of time down the line. Uh, if you want to change the amount of logging, so to speak, that you do, because right when you make the program, you're going to do what's called debugging, and you're going to need to find you know, exactly where everything's going wrong, so you're going to do either a lot of printing out or a bunch of logging to a file. But then over time, once you've you know, uh, worked out a lot of the bugs, you're going to not want to be printing out a bunch of stuff or logging a bunch of stuff to a file. And so that's where this logging hierarchy comes in, and you can also kind of customize what level of logging you really want to do. Uh, logging is also really helpful for applications that you deploy, especially with things like beta testing. So if the user is having problems, they can simply turn on debugging mode and this will hopefully log everything that the user is doing and will find you exactly where the user is having a problem instead of having to use like process of elimination and guesswork. Um, and you can also like, if you have some sort of like user settings, uh, you can have the triggering of a warning or error or critical error log change the logging level that's set, right? So normally, it, by default, it logs warning and above, uh, which is a good, a good thing once you've finished your debugging. That makes sense. Um, but like, say the user uh, encounters a uh, critical warning or something like that, um, then that can trigger the logging setting to drop down to level one debug and it logs everything again. Um, so anyway, it, it's just really helpful and um, it's definitely something you'll want to have in your arsenal as time goes on. So let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, all you have to do is import logging. Uh, the next thing you'll want to do is specify a file. You don't have to save it to a file. You can just print out on the console, um, but generally you're going to want to have a logging file. So you do logging.basicconfig, this is you know basic configuration, and here you'll specify the file name that you want to be the log file. It could be anything. You can have a .text or .whatever, um, but just for the sake of it, we're going to call it logfile.log, and then you specify the level equals and what this is, is is that level I was just referring to. This is the level of logging that you want to do. So when you first make the program, it's probably going to be debug in all caps. So this is going to log everything, right? And there are five levels of debugging. And uh, the first one, level one, is just debug. And this is just a lot of detailed information. The next level is two. This is info. And this is just confirmation uh, that things are going according uh, to plan. The next one is, is the third level, and that's warning. That's the default it'll be set to. If you don't specify anything here, it's just going to say warning. That's going to be the level. Uh, warning is, is reserved for something unexpected has occurred. Uh, number four is error. Some function failed. And then finally, number five is critical. Um, something failed and the application uh, must close because of this critical failure. So those are the levels. And you so right in here, you can use these debug, info, warning, error, critical, obviously written in all caps, um, to decide what level of stuff you want to do. But for this, uh, we're just going to use debug. 
Um, oh, we need to close up our parentheses. So once you do that, now let's let's go ahead and make a main loop. We'll just define main this. We're gonna have a try, and we're gonna also have an accept exception e. All this stuff we've already uh, done before, and then we'll call the main loop here. Now let's put some stuff within the try loop. Like let's purposely fail this try loop. So say you've got something like you're you've def you're gonna define a variable. We're gonna call this math fail equals one divided by zero, and you can't divide by zero. So this is obviously going to break, but this is the main part. I mean, this is this is it for our main loop. So our whole main loop is going to fail. This means the application is definitely going to fail. So in this exception down here, you're going to want to do logging.critical, and uh, you'll just want to put in the string version of E, um, whatever that exception was. But what you're with this, you say logging. So we know we want to log this information if it's if it's at the correct level anyway and this is the level that we're calling it you could call this level warning but this is actually a critical error because the application will not run so we're saying this is a critical error uh, please send it in so we'll save this and this is our logging here obviously there is no logging file but it will show up um, just a moment whenever we begin our uh, our little program here so we'll go ahead and run it and sure enough we didn't actually see any error or anything like that but obviously we got an error so we'll close this and we'll come back we'll come over here uh, to our log file and we're gonna open this up and here you have a critical error root integer division or modulo by zero so division by zero um, so it's it's logged in this little file for us that we had a critical error. Now, let's say uh, that was deeper or something in the um, program. So let's say try, and since we're in the main try loop, let's go ahead and log uh, debug. Um, we are in the main try loop. That way, if you do get an error, you know that, well, what's the last thing we did? Well, we entered the main try loop, and then we failed. So again, if we were to run this, we just ran it, it failed, oops, made it big. Close it. Come over to our log file, we open that up. Now keep in mind it's gonna append. So this was the old error. Um, but, so this is the new stuff right here. Debug, root, we are in the main uh, try loop. So we can close that out. Uh, we're not gonna save, and let's go ahead and delete it. And so we can start anew. And then down here, what we're going to do is we're going to say if one is greater than two, uh, logging.info entered into the uh, first if statement, uh, and then else logging.info entered into the first else statement. Right, because this is just, we're just saying, what, what are we doing? We're just making some info. Um, this is where we are. You could also just say this is also debug, right? Like, this is probably more likely to be debug information, to be honest. So you could say that, and then we can, you know, do some things like print hello. Yeah, these are our, our awesome little functions going on. So in this sense, we can save this. We'll run this one and nothing really happened but we'll come over to our log file here we'll open up the log file and you know okay we're in the main loop still same thing as before kind of divide by zero now let's do you know one more one more example and i think you'll probably pretty much have the uh get the point um so let's say we want to continue with this if statement if one is is less than two do these things print hello and then try, um, we'll try URL lib two dot open or yeah, it's URL open is the correct thing. URL open http colon slash slash google dot com dot read. We're gonna yeah, we're gonna read that. But oops, we didn't import URL lib two. So finally, accept. Now see in here. This isn't gonna. This isn't something that's gonna break the entire script. 
Um, it could, I suppose, if you if you didn't have these try and accept here, that would indeed break the entire script. But uh, in this case, it's not going to break the entire script. And the only reason here it did it, it did break the entire script is nothing in our script was able to run. Um, so we called it a critical error. But in this one, I wouldn't really call this a critical error. It's more like um, what is called an error. Uh, so you would say, you know, like logging error because this function, whatever we're attempting to do here, has failed. But the rest of the script is going to continue working and everything else worked fine. But this is kind of messed up. So you would just say logging error. And then I would say, uh, you know, this probably, we would just call it a function probably. But we would say the URL of two um, URL visit failed. Failed. Um, for the reason of, and then you use percent s. We get we'll start getting really fancy, and then we'll say, um, oops, not that, this, and then we're gonna say percent uh, e. I guess we'll say string e. For this. So it's gonna log. Um, this right i'm gonna say url lib2 url visit failed for the reason of percent s which just means this some sort of string and then this is saying this string and then the string version of e so you know we've done this before with the how to work with exceptions and just print out that exception so we're going to pop back on over here and let's save this let's run it let it do its thing it's going to save to that log file we're going to close out of this, come over to our log file, open up our log file. Ah, and we didn't even get past it because of the stupid uh, division by zero error. So let's pop back over to our division by zero. Comment that out. I was getting in our way before as well. So we printed out our hello, so we know we at least got this far. Um, you can also use the debugging uh, to print to the console as well. Um, so anyway, we're going to close this out. We'll come back over to our log file, open it up, and then we see in our log file that error root URL lib2 URL visit failed for the reason of, and then this is the error that is saved to the exception, right? This is kind of like the stuff that would be printed out in red on your uh, IDE. So you can even save, you know, variables that are generated dynamically into your log file. And with that, I'm just going to show you, uh, let's say you're, you know, you're past the debug. So it, like we only want to log warning now. So we'll save this. Let's close out uh, the, uh, this. we'll just delete this, come back to it in a second. We'll minimize that. Save it, run it, print it out our hello. Probably got to URL lib2, failed. So let's bring that back up. Here's our log file, open that up. And sure enough, the only thing it, it printed out for us, it didn't print the debugging stuff, it didn't print the info stuff, it only printed out our error problem, and which was, of course, the URL lib2, the visit failed because of um, this reason here. So anyway, um, that's basically it to the logging function. There's a few more um, intermediate to experience details that you can use with this logging function. But for the most part, uh, this is it. This is what you want to use logging for. It's definitely a great little addition to any big program that you've got. And then also, again, if you're going to be deploying out programs to use, you definitely want to have logging brought into it. And it also saves time uh, as far as debugging purposes are concerned. You know, whenever you want to debug, you can just, boom, flip this into debug mode instead of warning mode, um, and you're set.